if there was a team that had a great preseason this past uh, 2019, it was definitely Atletico Madrid. They were very exciting, especially uh, because they beat Real Madrid 7-3 in New York. They beat them 7-3, so they beat the brakes off of their city rivals. And not only that, the signings that they made in the summer transfer window, on paper, they looked very good. They looked like signings that were going to pan out to be just really good and probably... You know, they were going to end up being signings that we were going to talk about for for a long time. They look good on paper. And then that's about it. And then the season started and Atletico Madrid kind of fell down. They started fading into a reality that they were soon to figure out that was going to be their reality for perhaps the rest of the season. A lot of nil-nil draws, a lot of just draws, period. They couldn't seem to get a win to save their lives. They dropped points to Real Sociedad, who actually turned out to be one of the surprise teams in La Liga. They dropped points in the Champions League. Not not really that it matters much, but you lose to Bayer Leverkusen, a team that, you know, is so-so in the Bundesliga, and you lose to them. Um, They were eliminated in the Copa del Rey quickly. To a team that's in the like third division. That shouldn't happen. Especially with all the money that they spent. And they lost to Real Madrid in the Super Cup. And this past weekend. They lost to Real Madrid. In the Spanish League. And speaking of that, of that game. I sat down to watch Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid this past Saturday. And I have to say. I was just very disappointed. I feel like I'm always disappointed when I watch these games. But I was very disappointed. I didn't really like what I saw. Because I saw it with a different eye. Before when I was watching Atletico Madrid, I would see them as, you know, just a a team that competed against the big teams. A side that would give a lot of problems and issues to Real Madrid, to Barcelona, to... Whoever they faced in the Champions League, whether it was Bayern Munich or Chelsea or I don't know, whoever they would face. They would always give them fits. Part of that, of course, was the style that they played with. Now, with all the signings, with all the attacking signings that that this team has, you expect them to play a little differently. And I didn't see anything different from this team. I do have to point out, though, in the first half, Atletico played pretty well for like a 15 minute period they had a lot of chances they created a lot of opportunities off of the counter and they missed a lot they just missed a lot they couldn't seem to score the ball to score a goal to put the ball in the back of the net even though Morata was um was their striker and you know when he he's hit or miss we'll talk about him a little later but for those 15 minutes Atletico played very well but they couldn't seem to score. They, they they just couldn't score. They couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And that was a big issue. That's That's been an issue throughout the entire season. We just talked about their nil-nil draws. But then what was more worrying wasn't so much that they didn't score. What was worrying was how much they fell in, in a span of a few minutes. I mean, to be fair to them, they went into halftime, and they kind of had the upper hand, even though the game was tied. Real Madrid made a few adjustments, and Diego Simeone failed to react to those. He didn't adjust properly to the the adjustments that Real Madrid made. And that was part of the reason why they lost. Um, We'll talk about Real Madrid in, in the next segment, but... Their team was very compact. It was very narrow. There was nothing going on on the wings. They bring on wingers. Vinicius comes on. Uh, Lucas Vasquez comes on. And Real Madrid just looks completely different. They play better. They play wide. The fullbacks start to link up and make overlaps. And they begin to attack through the wings. That's what Real Madrid was doing. And Atletico was like, whoa, what's going on? I was expecting Diego Simeone to, to do something about that and he did do something about it but he didn't react properly he did the incorrect thing 
I was expecting him to keep Morata and to bring on a winger. He took out Morata and he brought on Thomas Lamar. That was actually before the goal, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he failed to adjust to how Real Madrid was playing in the second half. Again, I, I just mentioned that substitution, taking out his striker. It, it turns out that he was injured or whatever. But when a player is injured and things aren't going as bad or you don't want to switch up the the system, you don't want to switch up what you're doing, you change the player just based on the position. You don't You don't change... A striker to bring on a center back. You don't take out a center back to bring on a striker. You don't do that if you're content with what what is going on. So it was clear that Simeone was not happy with what was going on on the pitch, but he just didn't make the proper reads. Um, again, he he kept that defensive midfield duo, which, by the way, Marcos Llorente was just a body. He was just a body throughout the entire game. He was inaccurate in the passing and defensively he just wasn't very sound and when you when you play for Atletico Madrid and when you play that position when you play defensive midfielder you have to be defensively sound you you have you can't be afraid to make the tackle and you have to be very good when you're passing the ball because the game just has to be fluent it just has to keep going and Atletico Madrid just they they couldn't do that so had I been coaching Atletico Madrid, which I'm not, obviously, I'm doing a show about talking about their coach. But what I would have done if I was Diego Simeone, I would have taken out Llorente and Morata, obviously, you know, he he probably wasn't going to play. And you know what? I made notes on, on how I would have played. I would have taken out Llorente. I would have put Saul in that spot. I would have brought on Saponjic. Um, who's their new striker. He's like 18 years old, play for Benfica. He didn't even bring him on. He probably didn't even look at him, Simeone. He's like, you know what? I, I have a striker, but whatever. Um, and then I would have played with Vitolo and Lamar on the wings. After a while, also, I, I'm kind of all over the place right now, but um, I, I just remembered something lo- looking at this 11 that I would have played with. Morata wasn't playing good that game against Real Madrid. He 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 didn't play his best game. But a big reason as to why he didn't play a good game was because no one was feeding him. No one was giving him passes. No one was linking up with him because there's no link. There's no direct link from the defense and the midfield to the attack. And that link, it's very simple. He has Angel Correa on the pitch. Playing him on the wings. Why don't you just play him as a number 10 and help your striker? That's another thing that Simeone failed to see in this game. You know, it's uh, it's quite obvious. It's quite obvious that Atletico Madrid has a lot of issues. They have issues that aren't... It, it's, it's not just the result that Atletico Madrid has issues with. It's not just... Losing games and drawing games that you're supposed to be winning. They were outcoached. They were outplayed. They were outthought. It was just bad. But it's a tendency that Diego Simeone has. So that's not really very surprising. But after all of this and watching this game. And going to sleep and waking up and... The, the next day and kind of thinking of what happened. There are two pl- two problems that Atletico Madrid has and they have to address immediately. The first one, they have to stop signing quantity over quality. What do I mean by that? I'm going to give you a list of some of the some of the signings that Atletico Madrid has made in these last few years. Thomas Lamar, Alvaro Morata, Alessio Cerchi, Raul Jimenez, Jackson Martinez, Yannick Carrasco, who's actually back. Luciano Vieto, Nico Gaitan, who plays for Chicago Fire. Kevin Gamero. Notice that I mentioned all attacking players. <laughs> there and uh, how did I forget Mario Manjukic? I forgot about Mario Manjukic, who is an incredible striker, a uh, Champions League winner, World Cup finalist, has done it all. Absolutely a great player, lasted one season in Atletico Madrid. 
um, they really have to stop signing just to sign. They brought on Joel Felix. Obviously, he was hurt. He couldn't play on Saturday. So that's why I didn't speak about him. But Joel Felix at 19 probably has to be playing somewhere else. Somewhere where the system benefits him, where he can grow as an attacker, where he can become a better player. When you bring on attackers to to this system, they drastically drop their level of play because all they have to do be, what they have to do mainly is defend. And that's the second problem. Not only do they just sign quantity over quality. Simeone's system might have seen its better days at Atletico Madrid. Hear me out. It might be crazy, but hear me out. This system was perfect when you were an underdog, when you were a team that didn't attract many players, when you were a team that scraped Europa League spots, when you were a team that made a party when you played Champions League. Now you're a Champions League team season after season. You've been to multiple Champions League finals too, so a couple Champions League finals. You're not a small club anymore. You're not an underdog. Players want to go play with you. Players want to play for Atletico Madrid. And you're still playing like a team that doesn't have great talent. So they compensate that with defensive tactics, or a good defensive structure, and good counterattacking. Not anymore, man. I'm sorry, Diego Simeone. You can't play like this. When you had Antoine Griezmann, which is a big reason why he left to Barcelona, which whatever, that that it is what it is. When you have players like Antoine Griezmann, or had, now you have Joao Felix, you have Morata, you've had Alessio Cerci, Raul Jimenez, who's killing it at Wolverhampton, Jackson Martinez, who was a beast in the Mexican League, Yannick Carrasco, Luciano Vieto, Gaetan, Gameiro, Manjugic, all these guys. They can't all suck. They can't. There's something flawed with the system. It doesn't benefit attackers. And I think, I think that Simeone's system has probably seen its better days. I think it's time for change. I think it's it's time for new faces. I don't know if this necessarily means that Simeone has to leave. Atletico Madrid, but if he's not willing to change, if I were a director at Atletico Madrid, I'd contemplate the idea of letting go of Simeone. And I'd think about it very, very hard because I don't know if I want my club to be mediocre because that is the direction that Atletico Madrid is going towards. They peaked. They peaked like in 2016. That's it. It's all been downhill since. Sure, they won a Europa League. Cool, whatever. But it's just been downhill. And you see the attacking players thrive in other systems, at other clubs. They couldn't do it at Atletico. I think it might be time to evaluate Diego Simeone. And if it has to be his last season, so be it. Build him a statue outside of the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium and thank him for everything that he did. But I think it might be time. I think it might be time for Atletico to evaluate Simone and maybe, perhaps, look for his replacement.